So when we look at golf shots like this, and it's funny you allude to it because you both show so much maturity on different times around the green when you're playing different shots. Maybe not maturity all the time in personality, Wolfie, but you do on your Come golf on. course, definitely. Now, when we stand here, I've put the wedges there. We've walked straight out. You've both picked up 60. Mm -hmm. Anything in that? Obviously, it's high toe. You've got the lowest bounce one in your hand, as have you. Yeah. Why have you gravitated towards that immediately? And you've hit a couple of shots. What do you think so far of the high toe? And feel free just to show us some shots as you want to walk through it. Yeah, um, I mean, I for me, I always kind of like, I always kind of enjoy a, a bounce that's a little lower. Because for me, I feel like we play on pretty hard surfaces, pretty tight surfaces. And, you know, honestly, sometimes I feel like it honestly bounces a little too much for me. Like just, I mean, Obviously, I enter the ground in a different way that Colin enters the ground and, like, everyone. So, like, it's whatever works for you. But for me, I've, I feel like lower bounce has been a little better for me. I've just been able to clip it a little nicer. And, and especially out of the bunkers is the biggest game changer for me. But in these type of shots, I've noticed that I do like it because it sits on the ground a little better. And I feel like it's not even a sharper leading edge. It's more just, like, I feel like... In golf, it's all about visuals. And if you set like a club down behind the ball and it looks good, you have a way higher percentage of hitting it a lot better. And I think that these sit very nicely behind the ball. Like you feel like you're gonna clip it nice and it just, it, you know, works really well. And then, you know, the high toe, it just allows for more time on the grooves. So, you know, it, it might get a little more spin. And I also think it looks really good to me. Like just like seeing all that, those grooves to know that you have so much more of the face to work with. What amazes me about you boys is you pick up so many things about these clubs. I see them designed here and designed like leading edge of high toe is a little bit lower mm -hmm. than leading edge of mill grind too. You've alluded to that. Yeah. The grooves out on the toe of this raw face. It's huge. Where do you use them though? It's huge. I mean, I saw you clip yep. one earlier to that flag there. Do you, are you consciously thinking if it's softer out there, it's dead? It's you know, the, I mean, the shots having, me having grooves is so important. And when we play like US Opens or we play in certain courses that they grow out the rough, when you don't have the grooves on the top of the face, that's where you're going to be hitting it when Oops. it's deep in the rough. The ball's going to be sitting down. You're going to open your face because you're trying to get it up. But when there's no grooves on the side, and we hit, we hit a ton of top shots off the toe. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the nature of things. When you come across it a little bit, open face. Having extra grooves helps so much, deadens the ball, softens it, you know? So when you're trying to hit like a soft shot like this, even though there's not really rough, you can open it, go with the slope, and if you catch it high on the toe, it's still gonna spin. So like a normal wedge, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have that kind of grip on the club. So when you boys um, have this shot over the trap and you're playing out of this grass where the ball sits up, like that there, to control that distance, mm -hmm. a lot of amateurs, we'd be grabbing the rake here. You know what I mean? Yeah. How are you controlling the speed at which the ball comes out of this rough? I think a lot of it's feel. I mean, I don't know about you, I but agree. Yeah. I, I think what a lot of amateurs don't do is feel it in their practice swings. And that's something I have to keep working on because like if you're here and you know, some guys might take a practice swing like this, obviously that's not going to get there. You know, you have to, it's all about guessing what it's going to do. We don't know exactly how the ball is going to come out but you have to commit to a certain shot. So like, if, I'm, if I have this line, the ball's sitting up like that, I don't think I'm gonna, you know, a little grass, I don't think it's gonna come out low, it's gonna come out high like that. So that's the kind of practice swing I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a bigger practice swing, I'm gonna open up the face, get it up high, and just kind of follow with that. But it's, but I mean, like Colin was saying, it's definitely more of a feel shot because, you know, at this time, you need to get it up in the air, you need to open the face, but, you know, as people know, opening the face increases loft. And then from there, you have to swing it, you know, harder. And, like, you know, I think for me the biggest thing is, um, especially with how my swing works, I notice that I take it back kind of closed. And so sometimes if I don't take it back long enough, I'll come down and my face will still be closed and it'll come out a little hotter and a little more left. Whereas, like, if I give myself that time, a little longer swing, doesn't mean faster, just longer. So, you know, you can hit this shot, and I can hit a shot right here, but I could take a full swing. And that's just opening the face, long. It doesn't matter how fast your swing is, it's just as long as it's a little longer. And so for me, I feel like lengthening your swing really, I mean, there's a difference between, you know, lengthening it and making it like loose. Like you can still have it to here, but you just gotta, in chipping, I feel like so many people have such like a, like a yeah. fast motion. 
and it just you got to just be smooth and like rhythmic and like i think that will make your contact a lot better as well 100%. and we talk about contact and let's pick these balls up and move forward because that covers here but what about when it gets tighter when it gets into this what advice would you guys have and obviously we've got more clubs in front of us as well different bounces on all these wedges which you're yes. testing yeah say we're then playing to different flags there's a bit of green to that second red flag say we're going to that what changes do you make do you still keep the 60 if it's the second flag on the right or do you now got much more green to work with um I've obviously you know as Colin knows it depends on the conditions if you're playing firm greens where you know it's really not going to check or where they're really firm and fast I think you're still probably going to go with the 60 here but I think when you're playing softer greens or if you have like a more teed up line, you know that you could hit it really nice and get some spin. Maybe it might be an open face 56 because at the end of the day, the last thing that you want to do is land it over the bunker and have it just hit hard and not be able yeah. to roll out to the hole. And the biggest thing with like, you have so much green, carrying a bunker, right? This is a shot you have to carry a bunker. We're not trying to land it two yards over the bunker. You feel way more comfortable and you have a lot more room for error if you try and play it halfway in between just say just say there was no bunker here and you had a long runway of green that's when we're taking out different clubs especially because you don't have to fly it halfway you don't have to fly it all the way to the hole but if you're trying to carry something you know most of the time I'm taking out 60 um, but you know with grass like this we're in Florida it gets grainy I almost like to use sometimes a 50 56 degree open it up and just the way the bounce comes through the turf it's a it's a lot more consistent yeah and you know if you if you start hitting really grainy shots and it gets caught um that's when people with 60s it's going to go you know two yards and you're going to be in the bunker and you're going to have to hit another shot that's not not easy as well and i think i think too with colin what like you know golf, golf is such a hard game in general that like yeah sure i mean i'd love to be able to have as many clubs in the bag as we can like wouldn't it be nice to have a 60 with five degrees of bounce for times that like you need it out of a bunker or you need it to like dig and get under if it's hard sand but then there's also times like this where it's grainy and the you know it's into the grain it's like oh i might want a little more bounce so it doesn't dig into the ground and the grass doesn't catch it but obviously you need to have something that is going to work in both areas but yeah i think what colin was saying is you know so how do you make that choice though wolfie because that everything you've said there is great bounce yeah. is helping the club come out of the turf how do you as a tour player who plays all these different golf courses how do you choose which one to go for? Well, it's definitely week to week. I think, you know, there's different conditions. You, sometimes you'll get bunkers that are really firm. Do you switch Do you switch your wedges? I don't. Your, for bounces? I don't. You stick? But you I, have, I, stick, I stick with the low bounce. You have like the eight or whatever, Yeah, right? I have, okay. I, I think, and I do like a custom grind, so it's a sharper leading edge. So pretty much to me, I do low bounce because I, I just think that Actually, no, 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 no. I do like medium bounce, like lower ish bounce. But to me, like I'm always, I always feel like I'm kind of like trying to pick it clean. And so yeah. for me, like sometimes I have a tendency to hit them a little thin. And that's why it gives me like the confidence of like knowing that like as long as I keep that same motion, like it's not going to just like bounce off the ground and I'm not going to hit it with the leading edge. And okay. I also like that too because with me, I have a sharper leading edge and that allows me to like clip it a little better okay. and not you know okay okay so i i change wedges a lot and i you know it, it'll like be that. part of my routine now um they both came out beautiful oh really good for uh for bounces so based on the turf you know i have to kind of figure out how it's going to interact as you can see i was using the seven for the most part in general i'd use a you know a lower bounce i'd use the seven because i as a, as a professional and, and as a golfer you want to learn how to use the bounce yeah so you want to know how you know it's going to react. Not everyone has the time to practice every day and, and figure out what bounce really does for you. Um, so like right now, I'm actually loving. We've got the you know the big wide. What's it called? The big, big foot? foot. The big foot. So it's got 15 degrees of bounce, right? And way a more wide sole. You just adjusted way to more, that shot though perfectly. 100. percent And it actually, I love it off this shot. So we've got a little softer turf here. And what I've noticed, and the reason why you know I might switch wedges is if we're playing in really soft conditions and you use less bounce, it's gonna dig more. Yeah. And we don't like that. We don't like to have divots when we chip like that. We like to have it pick almost, right? Yeah. Which you can get with Which that Which you can get sole. with wider soles. So, you know, a typical person that uses a lot of body and they come steep, I, th I think that's what a lot of people do, you want the bounce. Yeah. Because bounce is your friend. Bounce is, it's just gonna go like that. So you the can message. Dig, I could dig more. 
Amateurs need mounts. Go Absolutely. Let's see that thing out the trap okay. because you will see straight away. That one's really good. And, that, and you can play. Oh. Amateurs struggle to get the blade. I mean, you've played three belters there for sure. That was coming out a bit hot. But amateurs struggle to get the bounce oh. and open the face when they get in these bunkers. It depends where you want to fly it and how and how good your lie is, you know. Because you know there are times like right now I have a great lie. Yeah, I might, you know, I might want to take a sixty and fly it there because it is running away from you at the end. Yeah. But then there are times too where you're like, oh, I don't feel like I could fly it there, and like, you know, I don't feel like I could fly it that far for a sixty. So that would be where you take a fifty-six. You open the face a little bit, aim a little left, and you're able to hit it, and it comes out. Obviously, it doesn't fly as far, but it comes out with a little less spin. Yeah. And so this is the 60. And so for me, in order to hit it far, I try to take it more shallow and not really get as much shame, like not trying to hit so steep into it more. Make sure to get behind it, but don't try to go, don't try to get as much sand. And that allows it, you know, to come out a little hotter and fly a little farther. So open the face. It's good there. High toe, first time you've really Hit, I mean, that was good, mate. It ran someone else's ball, hit it. Okay. My bad. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you were talking about the raw face, too. And I think the raw face plays its biggest advantage. Or not the raw face, but the raw face with the high toe. Its biggest advantage is right in the bunker. Because I, I just I kind of wiped it off really quick. But I'm going to hit one for you guys. And you're going to see the mark yeah. on the face of where the ball goes. So, so you can leverage the toe as well with yeah. the grooves. Talk to me about that big foot before you change. Yeah, okay. Um, out I mean, of the traps. So talking about, yeah. And I, I see, mean, look, there's a big blast mark out the trap as well. Let's have a look at that mark. But like, look at this though. Yeah. So like people don't realize like you're, angle, it's all coming yeah, right to the 100%. toe. So if you have more groove yeah. to get it on, it's, yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. it definitely so much easier yeah. to hit it higher with a little more Just spin. Just seeing the path. Yeah. And when I look here and I look at the angle and like that splash mark, you can play this big foot with almost a square face, right? hundred percent. I mean, bounces your friend, especially when it comes to bunkers. Yeah. You know, unless it's a really thin bunker, people come steep, just like we were talking about chipping and they need the bounce. That's, I mean, that's what gets the ball up, right? The sand's going to get the ball up 15 degrees of bounce. I mean, we were talking, I heard you guys talking about the long bunker shot. Longer bunker shots, to me, you always want more bounce because you want it to bounce. You want it to get farther. You don't want the ball just to go straight up. Even for short bunker shots, though, you don't need to open it up as much because this it's going to get the ball popped up. So that's the biggest thing with the Bigfoot is that wider sole helps it glide. It doesn't dig, glide, but bounce underneath the ball. That's what you kind of want in a bunker shot. I mean, that's a little far, but, like, you can see how high it got up. I you think stood, that's the thing. You stood very square to that. Yeah, I, I stand very, I'm almost square to close sometimes depending on how short-sighted of a shot it is. So if and I'm you're trying getting to, the heel going in still? The heel is what's clear in that sand, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the heel is probably touching it first, but I, I do hit a lot of bunker shots off the toe because I'm, you know, a lot of guys, they're, they're very neutral with the bunker shots. I, I haven't been able to figure that technique out and I still come across it. Yeah. But the way I do that is I just open it, I close my stance almost, and I almost come across this left leg and go this way. And that's how it kind of pops up. You the nice same and with shot. that, Wolfie? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm opposite, actually. I'm more open. Um, I'm, I'm a lot more open, and I'm more, not only am I more open, but I'm also, uh, I think, more trying to get. Yeah, you don't go across. No, I no. try to go more. Yeah. And a obviously, lot. I mean, you try to go more across. When you want the ball to come out more dead and go higher quicker, that's when you hit down on it and come to the left because it just kind of pops up. But when you're looking for more of like a spinnier shot and like something to like probably fly a little farther but have a little more check to it, that's when you're going to try to go a little, you know, not out to the right because then you're going to thin them, but like more the thing, square. The thing for me when I talk to you guys is there's more than one way to do this. One. Percent. And you both have such great discipline in playing it the way in which is right for you. Yeah. I think that that's the lesson here when the, any, and you can see with that picks ball and then you see it land in the spin. Yeah. That's the a thing, great way to the, finish. The biggest consistency between us two, even though we're very different techniques and our swings are very different for the bunkers, is that our weight is very similar. Yeah. People, when you see, when you watch amateurs play out of the bunkers, they move 
they're moving so much, right? Their head's moving, their body's moving like golf sling, you know? You can get away with that when it's on grass. Out of the bunker, you gotta make sure, you know, if your ball is right there, you're hitting just behind it, right? Yeah. You're trying to hit that half inch, one inch, whatever, two inches right behind the ball. And I think, I mean, Matt can verify, I have a little more weight on my left. Yeah. I don't know about you. I mean, it doesn't have to be a lot, but just a little bit just to stay sturdy. Yeah. You know, even if you are 50-50, that's fine, but stay there. That's but, the biggest thing. You can hit any bunker shot Yeah. as long as you stay very stable. And I think and that leads into fairway bunkers as well. Yeah, well, yeah. But I think with you too, it's like you have a little more weight on your front, but it's more because you have a closed square stance. Exactly. So, I'm, so like for him, his tendency, if he didn't have weight, would be to go like this and come under, and then he'd have a problem yeah. with the contact. Whereas like for me, I'm more open, so I need to make sure to like, so I don't get too much like down and left on it. Yeah. Because as much as you do want spin and stuff, like, I mean, like you can tell the difference right here. Like this one, I'll try to hit higher and softer. Same ball position, same everything, but you come and you go, and it comes out a little softer and comes out a little shorter. But see how steep that divot is? Yeah. Like it's, and that's you, you the thing. get more sand. And it's the whereas control like low. Whereas if you're trying to spin it, it's gonna come out a little hotter, but a little farther. Yeah. And you're gonna have a little bit of check on it. like. Kind of that one, the first one is a little shorter, but you can see the difference. Yeah. It's like you can't, I, look how much steeper I got on this and one. And the than control that one. of that low yeah. point. And that's the thing, fellas, the control of the low point and your knowledge of the wedges is awesome. Listen, I wish you both uh, best to look at the Zurich. Well, it's awesome you. to spend some time with you about wedges. I'm sure uh, there'll be a few, bit of blaming going on whoever misses the green. But Absolutely sure not. No, week. there's no blaming in golf. Not, <laughs> no, no sorries, no not apologies, no, no